Hello, here's your lesson for section 9-1, Developing Formulas for Triangles and Quadrilaterals. Missy McCarthy, Okemos High School Math Instructor. In this lesson, we'll learn to develop and apply formulas for areas of triangles and special quadrilaterals. And we'll also learn to solve problems involving perimeters and areas of triangles and special quadrilaterals. So first we're going to look at a concept called the area addition postulate, which pretty much just says if you have a figure and it's um, a, an interesting shape, one you don't know the area of, not like a rectangle, uh, if you can find the area of the non-overlapping parts and add those together, that would be the area of the entire region. So for this particular, um, an illustration of this would be if you had, let's give it an irregular shape. Okay, a figure something like this. And if you could just drop that down and make this a rectangle, so you have your rectangle one here, and then you have your rectangle two here, the areas of these two rectangles, if you add those together, you'll have the total area of the region. So that's one thing you can do, and that's how we're gonna develop some of the formulas for our um, special quadrilaterals. Okay, so if we look here, we're going to try to find the area of a parallelogram. Our parallelogram is in dark blue here, and what we're imagining is that we could drop the height of the parallelogram, creating a triangle. If you were to pick that triangle up and move it to the other side, you would see that our parallelogram becomes a rectangle. So the area of this parallelogram is the same as the area of the blue rectangle. So therefore, our formula for area of a parallelogram is going to be the same as the area of the rectangle and it's going to be base times height. So if we were to find the area of this parallelogram we would need to know the base. We can see here that the base is 11 and we could say that this was 11 and then this side length here is 34. We could say that this was also 34, but we need the height. Now in order to find the height, I'm going to have to use Pythagorean theorem on the right triangle that we have there. So if this is h, I'm going to have to do h squared plus 11 squared equals, oh I'm sorry, not plus 11 squared, I'm sorry, it's plus 30 squared equals 34 squared. Then I have h squared equals, if you do the mathematics, you would get equals 256 and then the height would end up being 16 millimeters. So now that we have the height, we can now find the area. So the area of this parallelogram is the base times the height, which is 11 times 16, which is 11 times 16 is 176. And because these problems are application based, they're actually areas, I'm going to use my units and make sure that I try to write my units every single time. So it's square millimeters. Okay, for this one, we have to try to find the perimeter of the rectangle if the area is expressed in this way. Well, for a rectangle, I know that area is length times width. So an area or base times height. And I know that the area is expressed by this here. So 79.8x squared minus 42 is equal to 21, which is my base, times h, which is my height. That is what I don't know. So if I divide both sides by 21, I can find my height, and then perhaps we can get the perimeter. So we've got 79.8 divided by 21, and that's going to give me 3.8. So we have 3.8x squared minus 2 equals my height. And now that I have my height, I can use my perimeter formula to find the um, total perimeter. Now my perimeter is going to have x's in it because my height has x's in it. Okay? So when we do the perimeter, it's 2 times the base plus 2 times the height, or 2L plus 2W, a lot of you are probably used to that. So it's 2 times the base, which is 21, plus 2 times the height, which is 3.8x squared minus 2. And our perimeter ends up being, let's see, 42 plus, uh, what's twice 3.8? It is 7.6 x squared minus 4, and then if we combine our like terms, the perimeter is 7.6x squared plus 38. 
So there is our expression for perimeter of this particular rectangle. Okay, now we're going to move on to the area of a trapezoid. So for the area of a trapezoid, if you imagine copying this trapezoid and making it pink, ro um, reflecting it so that you can connect it on the other side here, you have doubled the trapezoid now, but it's not a trapezoid, or you've doubled the area, maybe I should say, but it's no longer a trapezoid. Now it is a parallelogram, and we know that the area of a parallelogram is base times height. So the area of this guy here would be um, the base, which is B1 plus B2, and then times the height. Now that's the area of twice um, the area that we are looking for. We really only want one of those. So in order to find the area of a trapezoid, we would have to cut that in half. So the area of a trapezoid is one half the height times base one plus base two. Okay, because this is the area of this figure, and so we only want half of that. Okay, so let's find the measurement. We want to find the area of a trapezoid with a base of 8, another base of 5, and a height of 6.2. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and draw our trapezoid. It's just arbitrary here. The height is always from base to base, perpendicular to the other base. So the height is 6.2 inches. And then this base, the entire base is 8 inches. And the entire base here is 5 inches. So the area of a trapezoid is 1 half the height times base 1 plus base 2. So we would have 1 half the height is 6.2 times base 1, which is 5, plus base 2, which is 8. It really doesn't matter if you do 8 plus 5 or 5 plus 8. So we have 3.1 times, uh, what would that be, 11? No. Yeah, 11. Oh my god, what is wrong with me? It would be 13. Okay, so then 3.1 times 13 times 13 is 40.3. So the area is 40.3. And again, I got to try to remember to include my units, inches squared. OK, let's find the base of this triangle if the area is 15 x squared centimeters squared. So the area of a triangle, that's another formula we should have committed to memory is one half of the base times the height. So if we know the area is 15 x squared, and then we have one half, the base is b times the height, which is 5x in this case, can we solve for b and find the base of this triangle? Uh, let's see, OK, so one of the first things I would probably do is double both sides. And that would make this 30x squared equals 5xb. Then after I double both sides, I would divide both sides by 5x. And you don't have to do it this way. This is just how I saw to do it. And then the base would be equal to 6x. So the base of the triangle would be 6x centimeters. All right. Let's see if we can't find the missing base in this trapezoid if the area of the trapezoid is 231 square millimeters. So for this one, we know the height is 11. We know base 1 is 23. We've got to find base 2 if the area is 233. So again, I'm going to start with my formula. The area is 1 half the height times base 1 plus base 2. The area is actually 231, and we have 1 half times 11 times base 1, which is 23, plus base 2. So we get 231 equals half of 11 is 5.5 .5 times 23 plus b2. At this point, I'm going to divide both sides by 5.5. So if I do 231 divided by 5.5, .5, 
um, 231 divided by 5.5. I end up with 42 is equal to 23 plus base 2. And then subtract 23 on both sides. And we get base 2 is equal to 19. And again, i got to remember my units, 19 millimeters. So we found the missing base. All right, our last two figures here that we're going to do the area of is that of an, uh, a kite and a rhombus. And we're going to use the uh, area of a triangle to help us develop the area for a kite and a rhombus. So if you notice here, this diagonal D1 breaks our rhombus and our kite into two triangles. So if we can find the area of one of the triangles, we can use that to find the area of both of the triangles by doubling it. So when you do that, you break this um, in half because the diagonals bisect each other. So this is half D. So if you're finding the area of just this rectangle or this triangle, it's going to be one half the base, which is D1, times the height, which is half D2. So the area of just this part here would end up being one fourth D1, D2. But we want the area of the whole thing, so the area of the entire kite would actually be double this. We've got to double it if we want both triangles. And so when you double that, you end up with one half D1 times D2. And the same thing is going to go for this one. So this formula is actually the area for a kite and a rhombus. Okay, let's see. All right, so in this example, we've got to find the area of the kite, where I think that um, x is this here and y is this here. Now remember the diagonals uh, bisect each other, and they are, or I'm sorry, this diagonal bisects this one. I didn't mean to imply that this one was bisected as well. It is in a rhombus, but not in a kite. But the diagonals are also perpendicular. Okay, so if we can find, we know our formula is D, um, 1 half D1, D2. And we are going to need to find the length of both of our diagonals. And we know that's 28, so we've got to try to find X and try to find Y. All right, so I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking of using the Pythagorean theorem to find y. I know that this is also 35, and this is also 29. And then once I can find y, then I can find x. So if I use the Pythagorean theorem, I would get y squared plus 28 squared equals 35 squared. So I'm just going to do 35 squared minus 28 squared, all in one WAP here. And I'm going to get y squared is equal to 441. Then I'm going to take the square root of that. And that gives me 21. So y is equal to 21. So now that I know that y is 21, I also know that this is 21. And that tells me one of my diagonals. But now I have to find x. And I'm going to do the Pythagorean theorem again to find x. Because I have x, I have 21, and I have 29. So I'm going to do x squared plus 21 squared equals 29 squared. Again, I'm going to do this all together. I'm going to do 29 squared minus 21 squared. And that's going to give me x squared is equal to 400. So if I take the square root of both sides, I get x is equal to 20. So if this is 20, I know my other diagonal. So to find my area now, I'm going to do 1 half. The first diagonal is 42. And the second diagonal is 20 plus 28, so that's going to be 48. So 42 times 48, and then divide it by 2. And we end up with a total area of 108 square inches for this kite. All right, so rewatch any parts of the video for full understanding of the areas of parallelograms, trapezoids, kites, and rhombuses. Uh, all of the formulas that you learn should be memorized. You will not get a cheat sheet, on, cheat sheet on your quiz or your test. You've got to know what these formulas are for these particular figures. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to type any questions if you need to, and I'll respond as soon as possible. And we're going to continue tomorrow just as we have been in the past with a lesson quiz and worksheets. See you then.